At $200, the new 52-inch Aerodyne Smart Fan from Hunter is one of the most affordable options on the market, and I think it looks really good. My name's Eric Wielander, welcome to my channel. So recently, when my old ceiling fan I got with my house ended up dying, I replaced it with a new smart fan from Hunter with my own money. Now, is this a better option than using a fan control installed in your wall, which is something I've talked about previously on this channel. So we'll talk about that, also my experience using the fan, and if you stick around to the end of the video, I wanna show you how I've also integrated this smart fan with Philips Hue smart bulbs. So Hunter has a line of Simple Connect smart fans, and this means that they're also compatible with Apple HomeKit. Now, now, at the time of filming this video, I haven't seen concrete plans from Hunter about when or if they'll support Matter, but they do support pretty much all the major smart home ecosystems, including Apple's HomeKit. Now with a HomeKit compatible fan, there are some advantages over a smart fan control in your wall. The first is that you can set the direction of the fan inside of the home app. And this can be nice if you have a furnace running in the winter, I'm told that running the fan in the reverse direction helps the airflow for the heat to move around your home. Now, another obvious benefit you get with a smart fan is of course a new fan. So depending on the age of your fan and whether you like it or not, looking at a smart fan could be a nice way to both upgrade your fan and get it smart control. Another advantage of a smart fan is that it can work in scenarios where you might have combined wiring for both a light and a fan together. The smart fan can separate those two out whereas you might not then in that case have a dedicated spot for a fan control on your wall. But there are some downsides of having a smart fan, one of which is that you're probably gonna have still a light switch on the wall that can cut power to the fan and the light. And that means that the fan will go offline from your smart home if someone turns the power off. So I've put covers over the light switches on my wall that control this fan. The other downside is that sometimes in the past, the fans have had the reputation of having flaky Wi-Fi connections and not working too well. In my experience, once I dialed in the Wi-Fi settings just right, everything's been working great. But we'll talk more about the settings I'm using for that in just a minute. So installing the fan is very straightforward. I found the instructions which come in a paper manual, very easy to follow. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the wiring does support scenarios of if you have dedicated wires for the fan and the light or the same circuit for both. And you can probably do this alone. They have sort of this nice setup with I think more modern ceiling fans in general where they can kind of hang in the socket before you actually screw everything in. So you don't need to have like a second person there holding up the fan the whole time you're getting the wires all set. And it comes with a two inch and a three inch down rod, which is that sort of metal pipe that goes between the actual fan unit and then the part that connects to the ceiling. The three inch rod is pre-installed, but you can also change it out for the two inch one. And if you need a longer down rod, you can get those direct from Hunter's website. Now, before getting into the smart home side of the features, you can also adjust the fan with the wireless remote provided in the box. And one of the things I've been really impressed with from the fan perspective of performance is that it can work really well at high speeds and it's just very quiet and stable. I think that's back to the benefit of getting a new fan. Sometimes when you're upgrading a lot of these older fans, you'll be surprised about the good performance and just benefits of fan technology that have marched forward over the years. Now, adding this fan to your smart home, you wanna download Hunter's Simple Connect app and follow the instructions there, and then add it into your Apple smart home. In order to get it to work reliably on your network, I would highly recommend giving it a static or dedicated IP address. This basically means that every time the fan connects to your network, it gets the same address on your network. And pretty much any wireless router system has ways to do that. So look into that for yours if you haven't done it already. And for networking nerds out there, maybe you have a ubiquity system like I do, I found with trial and error that turning off PMF or protected management frames seem to help the fan be connected more reliably, but maybe that's just all placebo effect and wasn't actually something that helped. Of course, one of the annoying things about the Hunter app is you have to set up 
an account when you're going through the setup process. It's just one more username and password to keep track of. But then once I got the fan added to my Apple smart home, one of the other things I noticed is just that adjusting the brightness of the lights, which is possible on this fan, just didn't seem to work out so well with the light bulbs that were provided in the box. And one of the setups my family really gotten used to using in our living room is a Lutron Aurora dimmer, which is actually something that works with Philips Hue light bulbs. So that way they could touch the dimmer on the wall and then the lights in the living room, both from the lamp as well as the ceiling fan would all come on and they could adjust the brightness in sync across those different light bulbs. And maybe if you're into Philips Hue lights as well, you might have Philips Hue light bulbs in your ceiling fan that you're hoping to replace with a smart fan. So there's a little bit of home kit trickery that I did to make this all work out nicely. Now, even if you're not interested in using Philips Hue, bulbs specifically with a smart ceiling fan, I think there's some ideas here that you might be able to take and make some really cool automations of your own with this similar kind of a setup. So I'm here in the living room in the home app and if you notice there aren't any ceiling fans here. I have fan light one and fan light two and if I tap in on the details of those you can see that those are actually the Philips Hue light bulbs. So what happened to the fan and the light that I have in my living room? Well, if you have a HomePod in that room and you've added lights to that specific room in the Home app, and then you ask the HomePod to turn off the lights or turn on the lights, the HomePod's gonna go find those lights in the Home app or you know in HomeKit and turn them on or off. And the problem there is if you turn off the lights on the fan, that's gonna cut the power to the Philips Hue light bulbs. But on the other hand, you want the actual fan to seem as if it's in the living room because you wanna be able to talk to the HomePod to command the fan speed or fan being on and off or anything else you might wanna control. And then the problem of course is even though you can show the lights and the ceiling fan as separate tiles, HomeKit won't let you put them in separate rooms. So if you have the ceiling fan in your living room room, then those lights that you don't want to turn off get added to that room as well. So in order to solve this, I actually added the ceiling fan into a room called Ceiling Fans in HomeKit, even though it's physically still in my living room. Now, if I go here to the ceiling fan, you'll see I have the controls here to adjust the direction as well as the speed on and off of the fan. So that all works just fine. You might also notice that I have the name of the fan being living room ceiling fan. So that way, if someone talks to the HomePod and asks for turn on the living room ceiling fan or whatever, blah, 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 living room ceiling fan, then it will still work. But then the lights are called always on Hunter lights. So that way, if someone else in my home sees this, they understand that these lights should be always on because these lights are what's powering the hue bulbs that I actually use for the lights. So if we scroll into the details here, you'll see that I've also added an automation and this happens when the ceiling fans always on hunter lights, which are these lights, when those turn off, it triggers an automation that turns on a scene called hunter lights on. So if these lights were to ever turn off from some kind of a smart home command, that automation would trip and then a few seconds later, the lights would come back on, therefore restoring the connection of the Philips Hue bulbs in that light fixture. So while all this seems kind of complicated, I just keep these ceiling fans over here and I could have more than just one ceiling fan as long as I'm giving it a name that corresponds to that particular room. Let's say parents' bedroom ceiling fan. And of course, if I wanted to add any scenes in the living room that also controlled the fan, I can certainly do that. So let's say every time I wanted to turn on my living room bright scene, which wouldn't really put a ceiling fan there, but just go with me here. If I add or remove accessories, then I can scroll down, of course, and add the living room ceiling fan to that scene. So is this Hunter Ariadyne the right choice for your home when you're looking for a smart fan? And I think at $200, the decor seems like pretty minimal and it would fit in a lot of different homes and styles. So 
uh, that's probably going to be a good option for you. And then the Simple Connect wireless system, if you're willing to just make sure it works well with your smart home, uh, I think it could be a really good fit because it gives you more detailed control over a fan than something like a Lutron fan control on your wall. Now, that said, it took me a lot of effort to just get this customized just how I want it for my smart home. As you saw, I added Philips Hue and then also had to troubleshoot a little bit to get it to work well on my Wi-Fi. And I put the switch covers over the switches in the wall. So you might see all those things and think that you could do the same and make a great smart fan setup in your home, but you also might see all that and think that's a whole lot of trouble that you just don't want to deal with. So that choice is up to you. Let me know in the comments below if you had to get a new smart fan tomorrow, would you get a Lutron fan control with a not smart fan or would you get something like a smart fan itself like this Hunter Ariadyne? Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Sophia here wants you to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Thanks again so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.